Hello, my dear doctor. I have come forward with a very important case, primary biliary cirrhosis. We call it the PBC. Yes, my dear doctor, this middle-aged lady presented with the pruritus and extreme fatigue and with some non-specific findings. But after clinical examining her, I have found the clinical findings are suggestive of primary biliary cirrhosis. And yes, my dear doctor, the clinically, the clinically getting the findings at the bedside are really, really needed and really, really helpful to make the diagnosis rather than going for the different test to make the diagnosis. And you will be able to make the diagnosis at the bedside rather than going for the different categories of the test altogether. So yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. The primary biliary cirrhosis, I'd like to say these are nothing but before going to the heart findings, I like to say these are nothing but the mother role might here. I say the primary biliary cirrhosis, the PBC is nothing but the primary body coterie in Bang Bang Bangla that we can say. The primary body coterie different with the mothers. So that's why I say the mother rule, umber rule, or M rule might here. So if it starts from here, that if you can follow me, I am writing the PBC. So this is nothing but the mother rule or M rule or the M rule middle jet mother. So you can say the middle jet mother and they presented with the symptoms M rule. Once again the malaise and marks. Malaise means the extreme fatigue my dear fatigue. And marks means the pruritus marks. Pruritus. And along with the, some pigmentation that we can get, the pigmentation. So, my dear listen very carefully, said that the primary biliary cirrhosis patients, the most commonly presented features are malaise, fatigue, extreme weakness, lassitude, and having the marks, means the pruritus marks, and having the pigmentation. So these two are the most common presenting features. These are the symptoms and the signs that we can say once again the ma, I'm saying the ma, mother. We are saying the ma, mother. So ma for xanthelasma. And this xanthelasma is due to the raised total cholesterol, with the hypercholesterolemia. And next thing, M for megaly, means the hepatomegaly. So yes, my dear doctor, is hepatomegaly. And now the investigations, the M rule that I can say the marked raise of ALP on LFT, with the marked raise of alkaline phosphorase in liver on liver function test. And other investigation that we can do the IM rule that is that we'll get the IgM antibody, we'll get the AMMA antibody. That's why I said the AMMA disease. A mother disease means the anti mitochondrial antibody might have. And this is the M2 subtype variety that we can expect and we can get there. So, once again, IgM antibody, AMMA antibody, M2 subtype. And this disease is strongly associated with the, all the M rule, once again, the mother's disease. One of the mother disease that we need to know, the first disease, my dear, SJS, I say it is Sjogren syndrome. Or Jogner syndrome, and second mother disease like the rheumatoid arthritis, and third disease once again, the thyroid disorder. There are a long list of autoimmune disorders can be associated, but at least this Sjogren syndrome, rheumatoid arthritis, and thyroid disorder that are strongly associated. And all these features, if I'm saying very quickly, the middle-aged mother presented with the malaise and marks, so she presented with the malaise and marks. And the pruritus marks my dear. And critically at the bedside we found she has got the ma xanthelasma. So she has got the xanthelasma. And also hepatomegaly, M4 megaly. So we found the malaise and marks and then we found the xanthelasma and the megaly. An investigation that we need to know that the raised alkaline phosphorase, marked raised of alkaline phosphorase, LFT, and then we can get the 
M antibody with the IgM antibody, AMM antibody, along with M2 subtype variety. And my dear, listen very carefully now. Yeah, and this is strongly associated with the Sjogren's syndrome. And Sjogren's syndrome is the Sika syndrome, the dry eyes, dry mouth, and dry all the mucosa. So we found at the bedside, she has got the tear, the artificial tear. The bedside. So yes, my dear doctor, putting all them together means she has got the Sjogren's syndrome altogether. So Sjogren's syndrome at the bedside, along with the malaise and marks, along with the xanthelasma, along with the hepatomegaly that I found at the bedside. And also I found the features of the cholestasis, especially the jaundice, she is icteric and she is jaundice. And also I found the chronic liver disease stigmata also at the bedside, there is a spider nevi. So yes, my dear doctor, listen very carefully. So the treatment should be directed to the symptomatic treatment for the pruritus, especially, and also the cholestasis treatment. But the most important treatment is the liver transplantation. So liver transplant is the definitive treatment. So liver transplantation in PBC indications, so I say the PBC itself. So the P for pruritus and B for bilirubin, more than 100. So this is basically the two indications for going for the liver transplantation in patients with the primary biliary cirrhosis and C for nothing, cut. So this is the liver transplantation in primary biliary cirrhosis but the most importantly the extreme pruritus not responding to any medications anything else and it also observed that the pruritus lead to the people to get the suicidal event as well. So it's so intense pruritus and having this pruritus so this is said that this is the only one indication that improves the quality of life rather than the severity of the liver disease. And below with more than 100 is an indication of liver transplantation. And before and my dear, I'd like to talk here, the chronic liver disease, as we found her in her case, the number one features that the leukonychia, L for liver, L for leukonychia, and number, one, number two that we found in our case that she, this chronic liver disease is decompensated as she is deep jaundice. And third, she is also complicated by portal hypertension that is P4 splenomegaly, means the splenomegaly. It's got the splenomegaly as well. So means the total diagnosis, if we put them together, she has got the chronic liver disease, as I found the evidence by the leukonychia, and also I found the spider nevi. And secondly, this chronic liver disease is decompensated, as I found the jaundice, but she doesn't have ascites, she doesn't have the encephalopathy, right at this moment, clinically at the best side. And thirdly, this chronic liver disease is complicated by portal hypertension, as evidenced by the spermagaly. And fourthly, I have found this chronic liver disease associated with the hepatomegaly. So once again, if I'm saying the chronic liver disease with hepatomegaly, what are the differential diagnoses? Number one, that you need to think about the alcoholic liver disease versus non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So these are the two important causes of the enlarged liver. Usually chronically liver damage, the fibro fibrotic liver gets shrinkage, means a smaller liver. But the chronic liver is hepatomegaly. The first diagnosis alcoholic and second with the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Second bundle pack, chronic liver disease, now hepatomegaly with pigmentation. This bundle pack, the first diagnosis is the HH and second is the PBC. HH means a hereditary hemochromatosis when the man and PBC is a female. Means the chronic liver disease, hepatomegaly with pigmentation, first diagnosis HH, hereditary hemochromatosis in case of male, in case of female, primary biliary cirrhosis. Yes, my dear doctor, I have come forward with the message to make the diagnosis having the clinical findings at the best side rather than going for the different tests, my dear. So the boxes that I have I've been recapped, the previous is nothing but the M rule altogether. You can apply the symptoms, malice marks, 
and the mars and telasma and the megaly and then you can put together as well the Sjogren's syndrome at the best side that the artificial tear the Sjogren's syndrome and after that another message the liver transplantation in pbc is nothing but the pbc people write as people bilirubin and third important point that the findings that you found putting all them together she has got the chronic liver disease decompensated with complicated by portal hypertension with hepatomegaly means underlying etiology of this chronic liver disease is primary biliary cirrhosis especially evidenced by xanthelasma yes my dear doctor along with that we have made another box of chronic liver disease with hepatomegaly the alcoholic liver disease versus the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease chronic liver disease hepatomegaly with pigmentation in case of male herid hemochromatosis secondly if it is female the primary biliary cirrhosis i hope that my dear you enjoyed thank you thank you very much thank you once again